Hey guys, this is Senti Reads, and as you can see by the video title, today we'll be talking about another lesser-known Goosebumps book. I'll be covering the 17th book in the series, Why I'm Afraid of Bees. This book was published in 1994, so it came before Chicken Chicken that was published in 1997, and I covered that book in my last Goosebumps video, so check that out if you haven't watched it already. I'm mentioning it here because it has a lot of similarities to today's book. With over 200 books out, I know Goosebumps is going to repeat a few plot lines or scenes, but I was surprised at just how similar these two books were at certain parts. The similarities begin with the cover. Just like Chicken Chicken, it features an animal, or in this case an insect, with a human head. And I don't really have a lot to say about this cover because it's pretty bland. I chose this book because I thought the title was funny, and it wasn't one I remembered reading as a kid. Here is the blurb from the Goosebumps wiki. Note that I don't read these before I read the books. I always like to go into the books blind and I look up these blurbs after I've already read the book. Right brain, wrong body. Gary Lutz needs a vacation from himself. Bullies are constantly beating him up. His only friend is his computer. Even his little sister doesn't like him. But now Gary's dream is about to come true. He's about to exchange bodies with another kid for a whole week. Gary can't wait to get a new body until something horrible happens and Gary finds out his new body isn't exactly human. The body swapping really wasn't what I was expecting when I picked up this book, but I guess Gary has to turn into a bee somehow because of what the cover implies. So I guess this body swapping thing is going to happen. And with the intro out of the way... Let's jump right into Why I'm Afraid of Bees. The novel opens with Gary speaking directly to us, the readers. If you're afraid of bees, I have to warn you, there are a lot of bees in this story. In fact, there are hundreds. I don't really like opening lines that address the audience because it reminds you that you're reading a book, which sort of kills the immersion, but it's too early to nitpick, so let's move on. Gary's neighbor, Mr. Andretti, has a beehive in his backyard, which is where the bees come in. Don't worry about the body swapping for now, that'll come in later. And uh, the scene opens with the bees seemingly having escaped their hive and they swarmed Mr. Andretti, covering his body. The bees, Mr. Andretti screamed. They're out of control. Run! Oh, not the bees! Not the bees! Ah! Gary understandably freaks out, to which Mr. Andretti laughs and says it's just a prank and that he has total control over the bees. Mr. Andretti is generally a jerk to Gary throughout the story and teases him a lot about his fear of bees, which I find weird because we're never really told why Gary is afraid of bees or what exactly he doesn't like about them, which is odd because the book is called Why I'm Afraid of Bees, and he never just gives a reason as to why he doesn't like them. As mentioned in the blurb, Gary doesn't exactly have a great life. The first act really beats you over the head with, with that fact because the narrative is trying to establish why he wants to swap lives with someone else, but uh, honestly, R.L. Stein goes way too hard with this. Gary goes to play softball, and not only is he picked last, but the team captains actually argue with each other because none of them want him on their team. He ends up on a team, and he misses a kick when the bases are loaded, which completely ruins the game, so his team is mad. On his way home from the game, he's beaten up by three bullies that he describes as total mouth breathers. These guys are gorillas. I mean, their knuckles drag on the sidewalk. And I was really surprised that the bullies actually beat up Gary instead of just threatening him or him being able to escape somehow. Like, he really does get his ass kicked. And he comes home, like, bloodied, battered, bruised, cut up, and his family doesn't care at all. His younger sister Chrissy and their mom are making peanut butter cookies, and his mom can't get the jar open, so she asks Gary to help, and he fails miserably. She doesn't even mention that he's, like, all busted up. So he gives the jar to Chrissy, who opens the peanut butter jar with, like, literally two fingers. So... It's supposed to be this comical moment of them laughing at Gary, even though he's, like, beat up from a fight and they just don't care. But we get this hilarious line out of it. Even though Chrissy is only nine, she happens to be pretty strong. There was an excellent chance she could beat me up. This made me picture Chrissy as, like, a super buff, which cracked me up so much. And it also further shows how wimpy Gary is if he thinks a nine-year-old could win in a fight against him. But Chrissy seems, like, really to take pleasure in being as terrible as possible to her brother. At some point in the book, she comes into his room while he's trying to sleep and scares him, just like Cole did to Crystal on Chicken Chicken. How Cole showed up dressed like uh, Vanessa or whatever her name was. In this case, um, Chrissy just puts, like, a fake mouse in his bed and scares him. It, it serves no purpose. It served no purpose in either book. And it's just one of those classic Goosebumps fake outs that's really equivalent to a pointless jump scare in a horror movie. But anyway, back to the story. Gary, who's beaten up and is now being laughed at by his family, is obviously upset. So he grabs his bike and rushes out. The bike is described as his prized possession. So obviously something bad is going to happen to it. As he's riding, he sees two girls from school and tries to impress them. So he gets distracted and almost gets ran over by a car. Gary, I heard Judy shriek. Gary, look out for that car. Of course, this is a classic Goosebumps fake out, so Gary manages to dodge the car and instead rides his bike directly into a lamppost. This completely ruins his bike, 
and the girls point and laugh at him despite the fact that he almost died. And Gary almost dies a ton of times in this book, and he's in real mortal danger a lot of times, which is surprising to me considering it's Goosebumps. You know, it's a children's book. I thought most of the peril would not be quite so life-threatening. You'll see later on. So needless to say, Gary's day has been so bad, it's almost comical. This day just can't get any worse. Until he says this line. I'm serious. At that moment, I would have happily traded lives with a tree, or a bird, or a bug, or just about any other living object on the planet. I can't help but feel bad for Gary, even though he comes off as very whiny throughout the book. And by this point, I'm surprised Gary hasn't offed himself with how bad his life is most of the time. Like, he's being bullied constantly. Nobody seems to like him. He has no friends. His own family is rude to him. Adults bully him, like Mr. Andretti. It's so terrible. So as I said before, I think Arl Stein just went a little too hard on this character and like really overplayed this way too much. So um, Gary ends up going home and he plays a computer game when a ad pops up. Take a vacation from yourself. Change places with someone for a week. This is the introduction of the body swapping plot element. So the next day, Gary goes straight to the address that was listed on the ad, which is conveniently in his town for some reason. And it's a pretty plain looking office building with a lady whose name is Carmen sitting behind a glass screen with some sort of like sci-fi technology behind her that's not really explained what it looks like. And she has to talk into a microphone, which I think is to bypass the fact that she's sitting behind glass. But this microphone is actually a weird plot detail that will come back later. Carmen explains to Gary that the company, which is called Person to Person Vacations, matches people who want to switch lives. So they directly switch consciousnesses. So both people need to agree to switch with each other. It's a one-to-one -one switch. And she even says that she can switch Gary with a girl, which really creeped me out and was weirdly suggestive. She takes Gary's photo to add to the catalog. There's like literally a catalog you can flip through and see pictures of people who want to switch lives. And Carmen lets him know that she'll call him if someone chooses to switch places with him, which I don't know why anybody would because he has a terrible life. No money is exchanged and a price is never mentioned. So I guess this absolutely revolutionary technology is just handed out to elementary school children for free, which is another weird thing. Gary leaves the office and again is immediately beaten up by the bullies. I, I guess they just always know where he is at all times. They just stalk his location to beat his ass. So we just needed another reminder of how much his life sucks. A few days pass and Mr. Andretti pranks Gary with the bees again. And the scene doesn't last long because Gary gets a phone call from Carmen, the office lady from Person to Person Vacations, and she says she's found a match for him. It's a stereotypical popular skater boy named Dirk Davis. And it's explained that he wants to switch with Gary because he wants Gary to take some math tests for him, like when they switch bodies. And it was never previously established that Gary is particularly smart in any way, but I guess he is. For some reason, Carmen shows up to Gary's house with the body swapping device instead of having him come into the office. Which is weird, because if she was sitting behind glass, you think the glass would be there to protect the equipment, and she wouldn't bring it out of the office. And this scene doesn't make sense for a lot of other reasons. Is nobody else home? Like, where's his family? What would Carmen do if she, if somebody saw her using the machine on Gary? Would she just own up and explain what it is? Is it a secret? Does Dirk not need to be there for the transfer? Because Dirk is, like, not here. So is someone else, like, is there another agent at his house at this exact moment hooking him up to a machine? Like, what is going on here? So the scene has to happen at Gary's house for what is about to happen. They can't do this at the office because what is about to happen? So as the mind transfer begins, a bee from Mr. Andretti's hive somehow gets in the way, and I bet you can see where this is going. And suddenly I knew the hideous truth. The monster in the mirror, it was me. Miss Carmen had messed up, totally, and now I was trapped inside the body of a bee. This isn't revealed until later, but Gary's mind went into the bee's body, the bee's mind went into Dirk's body, and Dirk's mind went into Gary's body, so it's like a three-way transfer. And this is not explained until later, as I said. So when the transfer first happened, I was really confused because I assumed that Gary and the bee switched places, and I didn't know how Dirk factored into this equation at all. They just totally neglect to explain that until later. But we do get some nasty body horror stuff here as Gary is disgusted with his bee self. I had two giant eyes, one on either side of my head, and two skinny little antennas sticking out of my forehead. My mouth was truly disgusting. I had some kind of long tongue, which I soon discovered I could move all around and make longer and shorter if I wanted, which I didn't. My body was covered with thick black hair. I had three legs on either side of my body, and let's not forget the wings sticking out of my shoulders. So this transfer happens. Carmen packs up her stuff and leaves. She's completely oblivious to the terrible mistake she's made. Gary tries and fails to get her attention and decides he's going to follow her back to the office. So he flies out of the house to follow her. And um, Carmen is not able to hear him begging for help and thinks it's just a bee attacking her. So she swats him away. 
which causes him to fall on the ground somehow conveniently, like right under Carmen's tire. And she's about to drive away and run him over, which is another fake out of genuine peril. But she happens to stop because she has to buckle her seatbelt. So we get like some throwaway line about like, oh, seatbelts do save lives. Like, wear your seatbelt, kids, which is just funny that they're already trying to put a message in. So Gary, of course, manages to fly out of the way of the tire only to be caught immediately by Mr. Andretti. He's caught in like a bee net because I guess Mr. Andretti just walks around with a net trying to catch bees. Gary considers stinging Mr. Andretti to get away, but then remembers that bees die after they lose their stinger, so he decides not to. As Mr. Andretti carried me and the other bees across his backyard, I started buzzing and shivering with panic. How could this have happened to me? I asked myself. How could I ever have been so stupid as to try to change bodies with somebody else? Why wasn't I happy with the perfectly good body I'd already had? So uh, here's the moral of the story. It came a lot earlier than I expected. And obviously, it's pretty simple. Appreciate what you have, even if your life is miserable or you'll get turned into a bee. I'm sure we can all relate. Mr. Andretti puts Gary into the beehive, which is surprisingly scary. The air was hot and wet. Everywhere I turned, I was surrounded by a deafening, droning hum. I, I can't stand it, I cried. I could feel myself totally losing it. All around me, bees scurried around in the darkness. I stayed where I was, too frightened to move. The claustrophobic situation in the hive is made even worse by the fact that, remember, Gary is terrified of bees, even though we don't know why. He doesn't like the bees. So he's forced in this tiny, dark, hot space with a bunch of bees, and he does not like it. And the description of the hive is honestly kind of freaky, and it definitely would have scared me as a child. So bonus points here to why I'm afraid of bees. It did have a genuinely scary moment here. And it's made even worse because Gary gets hungry, And he's forced to eat honey that he's just watched the bees, like, regurgitate. So if you don't know, honey is basically bee vomit. If You know, if you didn't already know that, it's pretty nasty stuff. So Gary has to eat the bee vomit, and he doesn't like honey, and it's kind of gross, so I'm not going to put you through that. Gary somehow manages to make it out of the hive and back to his house, where he's almost killed again when Chrissy hits him with a fly swatter. He gets away from her just in the nick of time, just as everything happened to Goosebumps. And he goes up to his room where he sees his human body sleeping. And just like in Chicken Chicken, Gary needs to communicate, but as a bee, he can't talk. So he types out a message. In Chicken Chicken, they used a typewriter, but in this book, Gary uses his computer keyboard to push down the keys. And he even outright says that he's not sure if his like lightweight bee body has the weight to push down the keys. But they just disregard that, and he somehow manages to push the keys down. And he types out the following message. I am not B. I am Gary. Hello, me. Which is a typo he made because he's a B <laughs> trying to type. Gary's body, who is actually Dirk, but at this point you don't know is Dirk, uh, wakes up and shuts off the computer without reading the message. So B. Gary follows Dirk Gary, which is confusing. Dirk and Gary's body. As he leaves the house and meets up with the softball kids from earlier. And he's teaching them how to skateboard because remember, Dirk is like a master skateboarder. And I guess a skateboard was all it took to make them like Gary because they basically treat Dirk Gary like he's a rock star and just forget how lame he was just a few days ago when they didn't like him. Gary flies back to the person to person vacation office where he talks into the microphone. I told you it would come back to tell Carmen what happened. And this whole time, I assumed nobody could understand him because. I assumed when he was talking, he wasn't actually talking. He was buzzing like a bee because he's a bee now. But I guess he actually was talking. And just because he's a bee, he's super small. So his voice was too quiet for people to hear. So that's why he had to talk into the microphone. But don't think too hard about this because bees don't have vocal cords and this wouldn't be possible. And he is a bee. Just don't worry about it. Carmen basically just like shrugs him off and tells him there's nothing she can do about his situation because Dirk wants to keep Gary's body. And she's like, well, sorry, he's he's not gonna give your body back. You just gotta live as a bee forever now. And it's not really clear why Dirk likes Gary's life so much because it was hammered into us that Gary's life sucks. And I guess all it took was Dirk riding a skateboard and all of a sudden people like Gary. It's really not explained why he wants to stay as Gary. It's, it's just funny to me. Like there's no policies in place to prevent this from happening because surely this situation has occurred before where somebody liked the new life better and wouldn't go back. They don't They don't have rules or a policy. Uh, it's just funny. So Carmen eventually says that she's going to figure something out and leaves, inadvertently locking Gary in the building. And he makes a point to say it's Friday. So presumably Carmen will be back until Monday. And Gary knows he'll die of starvation if he stays trapped in the office because there's no honey or pollen or anything for him to eat. But thankfully, he immediately finds an open window to fly out of, so he's fine. But good lord, this kid gets so close to death so many times. He's in mortal peril, like, constantly. And I didn't mention this earlier, but at some point, he's also attacked by the family cat and is almost killed by the cat, which is the exact same scene that happens in Chicken Chicken, 
where Crystal, once she becomes a chicken, is attacked by a cat as well and almost dies. So there's just a lot of things that are copied. And one time in the narrative, it is implied that Gary does actually die. Stay calm, I told myself. A dragonfly is an insect, isn't it? And insects don't eat each other, right? I guess no one had told the dragonfly. Before I could move, it zoomed down, wrapped its teeth around my middle, and bit me in two. But obviously, this is another Goosebumps fake out. They're not going to kill a character during the book. What actually happens is the dragonfly just passes by Gary, and he just imagined the whole thing because he says he's tired. And I'm just like, okay, we're just going to gloss over that? We're just going to say he died, and then in the next scene, just go, oh yeah, he didn't die. Like, this really going to be what we're doing here? Uh, Goosebumps will just do anything for a fake out, even if it doesn't make sense at all. So Gary manages to leave the office and he finds Dirk's body. So actually Dirk, not Dirk and Gary's body. And this is when we learn that Dirk has been taken over by a bee. So he can't really talk and he's just sniffing flowers trying to get to the pollen. So this is really all we get about Dirk's body. And the scene was mostly pointless. It's just like, oh, look, this is how a bee would act if he was a person. There's just nothing else to that scene. Gary goes home and on his way home, he sees Dirk, who is in his body, interacting with the bullies again. And he's surprised to see that they're not beating him up. They're actually begging him to leave them alone. And it's not really explained what Dirk did to them to make them so afraid of him. But Gary was described as sort of like weak and wimpy, like his body. So I have a hard time believing that the bullies would ever be scared of him, no matter what kind of threat he made. He's just not physically imposing. So I don't know what Dirk could have possibly said to them. Uh, the confrontation ends, and so Dirk goes back home, and of course, B. Gary follows him home. Gary confronts Dirk, who can somehow hear him, even though nobody else can. Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Weird, huh? I'm not sure why, but I think some B cells got mixed up with my human cells during our electronic transfer. I can hear all kinds of little bug noises now. So, don't think too hard about how the body swapping technology works. R.L. Stein clearly didn't figure it out other than to make it as plot convenient as possible. So, sometimes people understand Gary, sometimes they don't. Sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Like, what about... Nothing about this transfer made sense. <laughs> Gary and Dirk fight over switching back. And again, it's still not really explained why Dirk likes Gary's life so much. Dirk just kind of says like, oh, you have great friends and a great family. But he doesn't. So I don't understand where this is coming from. So Gary, in a last ditch effort to get his way, gathers all the bees from Mr. Andretti's hive and causes them to swarm Dirk. And he's basically trying to, like, torture him into agreeing to switch. Like, look, I've got all these bees and we're going to sting you if you don't switch. But Dirk doesn't really care because he's like, hey, Gary, you're the one who's afraid of bees, not me. Just because I'm in your body now doesn't mean I'm afraid of bees. So the tactic completely does not work on him. He does not care. He's about to be attacked by hundreds of bees, which even if you're not afraid of bees, being attacked by an entire swarm would be terrifying. And, like, you might die. I don't know. Like, how many bee stings does it take to kill a person? Like, you could be severely injured. So Gary doesn't know what to do anymore. He's totally enraged that he can't get his body back. And in a fit of anger, he stings Dirk. A tiny bee had defeated a huge enemy. I was victorious. I had won a fight against a giant. My celebration didn't last very long. I suddenly realized what I had done. And I remembered what happens to a honeybee after it stings someone. I'm gonna die, I murmured weakly. I stung someone, and now I'm gonna die. And after this moment, we get a surprisingly dark few pages of Gary fading away and, like, presumably dying. And this is a children's book, so of course he doesn't actually die. So he ends up waking up in his own body with no explanation of what happened to the bee or Dirk. So I'm assuming that the bee died, and when the bee's body died... His consciousness got put back in his own body. It's not, it's really not explained what happened. And I don't know what would have happened if Gary or Dirk died during this switch. Like, would they both die? Like, would they just go back to the original body? It's, it's really not explained. It's just, everything is for plot convenience. Don't think about it too hard. But when Gary is back in his own body, the swarm of bees is still in Gary's room for some reason. So I guess this happened pretty quickly. Um, the timing is really confusing here of how long it took for the switch back to his own body happened. But he impresses his parents by calmly leading the bees out of the window, which was surprising to them because they assumed he was like some weak little wimp still. So he sort of gets some street cred by leading the bees out of the house. And after that, Gary does a complete 180 and he loves and appreciates his life. He has newfound confidence that made him more popular at school, and he even meets the real Dirk. The other day, I actually ran into Dirk Davis at the playground. At first, I didn't want to talk to him, but then he turned out to be pretty nice. He apologized to me. I'm sorry I tried to steal your body, he said, but things didn't turn out so well for me either. That bee flunked all my math tests in summer school. We both had a good laugh about that, and now Dirk and I are friends. So apparently Dirk and Gary go to the same school and just didn't know each other and it was never mentioned before now that they go to the same school. So this just even causes more questions to me. So 
does the body swapping only exist in this one town and you have to switch with people in this town? Do they have other offices in other towns that you could like switch to go to a different place? Like, I really don't understand. And I have so many questions because if I'm going to switch bodies with somebody, I don't want to do it with somebody that I could potentially run into. Like, it just is weird. I have so, I have so many questions. And the book really just ends here without any plot twists, which was kind of refreshing. Gary does, like, have a weird moment where he sucks the pollen out of a flower, which implies that he is still sort of bee-like, and he remained, he retained some of his bee qualities, but that doesn't really qualify as a plot twist to me. So good job, R.L. Stein. Not every Goosebumps book needs a final page plot twist. So in conclusion, I enjoyed this book a lot more than I enjoyed Chicken Chicken. Why I'm Afraid of Bees was far scarier, but it still has its fair share of issues. It has just as many useless side characters as any other Goosebumps book. And the body swapping technology completely doesn't make any sense if you put even an ounce of thought into it, as I've already discussed. And as per usual for a Goosebumps book, the action is frequently interrupted with dumb fake outs that are totally unnecessary and just kind of kill the rising action by faking you out. But I was surprised at how often Gary is in genuine danger throughout the novel. But as I said, frequently undermined by the fake out. So he's never really in danger. It is a children's book, you know. But I do appreciate that this book didn't throw in a random twist ending. I think R.L. Stein understood that it would have undermined the message of appreciating your life if at the end something bad had happened. He, it would have just killed the message there. And overall, I didn't have a bad time reading this book despite its flaws. It, it was fun. I had a good time. And I look forward to continue reading through the Goosebumps series. I'll see you in the next video. Stay spooky.